episode 102 of One Man's Opinion. It's the last episode of the season, and we're ending it with the world premiere of Webster's Bitch, written by Jacqueline Bircher and directed by Vanessa Morosco, running through June 18th at Playhouse on Park at 244 Park Road in West Hartford, Connecticut. The English language is an ever-evolving thing, and it is Merriam-Webster's dictionary's job to help that language evolve for the modern person. But what happens when they get something wrong? Or what happens if they don't explain something clearly enough that it creates a gap that causes them to get into their own verbal trap, as it may? And that is the premise in which Webster's bitch begins. It's late Thursday afternoon, and lexicographers Gwen, played by Mio Vergaft, and Nick, played by Hanji Chow, are finishing up their assignments for the day when Gwen's overly obnoxious sister, Ellie, played by Isabel Monk Cade, comes in. After a lengthy intro of Ellie disrupting the work environment, she discovers that Gwen and Nick's boss, Frank, played by Peter Simon Hilton, has called their supervisor, Joyce, played by Vianne Cox, a bitch on a hot mic at a seminar at Yale. Things get more complicated when it is discovered after some audio cleanup that he didn't call her a bitch, but said that she was his bitch. The series of events lead to debates as to what the word bitch means and debates on the offensiveness of the word. For example, Nick, who is gay, notes that the gay community uses the word sometimes an ironic term of endearment. Meanwhile, Gwen and Ellie argue that the word is a prejudicial and sexist term against women. When they look it up in their own dictionary, they discover that Nick was the one who last edited the definition of the word, including one that says it can be any woman. The drama escalates as Joyce comes to the office, and she attempts to rectify the situation, including revisiting the definition of the word bitch. They then notice that the definition of bitch using it as my bitch isn't in the dictionary, and they need to have sources to define what my bitch means. Later, Frank arrives and the drama peaks with a glaring debate between him and Joyce on women's equality in the workplace. Webster's Bitch is definitely a message play looking to evoke emotional responses from the audience regarding women's rights, equal pay, sexism, and the use of prejudicial language in general. In all this, I think Bircher succeeds in making her argument. As powerful as the conflict is between all the characters, there is very little development in these characters. They are all staunchly set in their points of view and beliefs, and are inflexible in their positions. The closest move we get is with Gwen, who is fairly young and naive, and learns a bit of life lessons on the unscrupulous nature of adults who will do anything they can to maintain the power positions they have. This rigidness with the characters make the performances feel a tad one note at times, particularly with Vianne Cox, who has a very stern persona and doesn't break out of it. I get it, she's a woman working in a male-led environment for decades, and she has built up these walls around her as her defense mechanism, but I would like to have seen her break through that somehow. The scene stealer, though, is Isabel Monk Cade, who, though an obscenely obnoxious role, makes it entertaining with her zany over-the-top antics disrupting the office. Johann Fitzpatrick has really found a place of comfort with designing sets at Playhouse on Park, and Webster's Bitch isn't any different, as he has designed a great-looking aging office space with cardboard boxes stacked throughout, kind of reminiscent of a newsroom bullpen, which I have much familiarity with. His lighting also hits perfectly with the overhead fluorescence washing the space with light, but texturing it enough that it doesn't wash out the faces of the actors. For a regional premiere, Webster's Bitch isn't bad. I like the premise. The characters are all unique and defined. I just wish the characters went somewhere more and the, and that the story impacted and changed who they were a bit more. And if you haven't figured it out yet, Webster's Bitch does have a lot of strong language and bitch is on the lower end of the profane words used in the show. So if you have any sensitivity to profanity, this may not be the show for you. I mean, I generally try to keep this show family friendly and avoid using language in it, but obviously I couldn't in this one. Well, that's one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Webster's Bitch, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. You can support my channel by being a patron over on my Patreon page. Any little bit will help. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. Season two is now officially over. Season three starts tomorrow with the new Broadway play, Grey House. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.